must have been since I saw thee on Il Clemur Bartat. We rest have been since I saw thee. Dark Dutch, I mean, glorious Gloucestershire, um, on a uh, private weekend dig. That's, uh, uh, be- I suppose, it's between a, a, a huge manor house estate, walled garden, um, arboretum, everything, huge estate, and uh, an old church. So there's uh, the land between it. It's called the Sacred Ground. So there's a lot to go at. Um, Two days just ain't enough. So, uh, I'm looking forward to things. The countryside is amazing, amazing. Let me just uh, sh- do a short clip to show you. Yeah, you can barely see on this camera, but the Severn Bridge is, whoops, right there. You can just see the tower glinted in the sunshine. Um, a lot easier <laughs> without so uh, we're on a high ridge looking down across the Severn Valley and across to Wales and the Mendips over to uh, the left and it's a brilliant sight I'm actually camped let me zoom round uh, in an old orchard so uh, not bad anyway um, it's only seven o'clock uh, we, we don't start digging really until uh, nine o'clock and it's uh, supposed to be one of the hottest weekends of the year so <laughs> uh, it could be interesting hopefully i'll have lots to show you by the end of it bye That's my first sickle of the day. Oh dear. I suppose really I should put my gloves on. That's it. <laughs> uh, a decibel half pence. Well, well. Right, I'm getting a, a 77 80. Not a brilliant signal, but. Well, definitely there. It's mixed in with iron, but I'm getting a hundred to a hundred and four there. So uh, let's have a dig. Yeah. 
is out. Not bad. It's virtually a kind of nothingness. But I can just see a, a George the Third on it. Can't see anything on back, not even Britannia. This land that I'm on, it's split into fields now, but it's what they call the sacred land. Uh, the church is just over there, and the manor house is just behind me, uh, there. And we're heading for the shady side of the field, so we might have a sit down. I'll take out a second spit just in case. Oh. Bit of green colour there. Lost it. Look like uh, copper patina. I don't know whether you can see it, can the view, but I'm with Fluff the Wonder Dog today, who's come to lay down in my shed. We're going to sit under a tree. Right, I didn't start recording this one because uh, it sounded like tinfoil again uh, and it will give it the same number so I started digging down dug down fairly deep and came up with this gold no actually it's, <laughs> it's I think it's adenized aluminium or adenized alloy and it's a hanging badge for uh, Aquarius, obviously someone that came to this uh, pop festival that they have here, we're uh, an Aquarian, so uh, if anybody's desperate for a slightly tarnished, not much gold adenizing left on it, uh, Aquarius locket, uh, see me. little well, I'm assuming it's gold uh, 48 49 it were given on the uh, 0 to 120 scale uh, can't see whether there's oh there is something inside it whether it's all marks or not I don't know Says something. Have I got my glass with me? So it's definitely hallmarks. I think, anyway. I don't know. Anybody know what 3.75 is? 
Look at the size of this field. And this is just one of them. There are loads like this. So that's the church down there. I don't think you make it out very well, but the seven estuary is just above uh, the horizon on the, the grass. Uh, it's huge. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, and it's too hot. Uh, the soil's rock hard. I think I might retreat back to car for an hour or two until it cools down this evening and go back out again because it's uh, it's getting silly and pouring liquid in as fast as I can and it's dripping out <laughs> even faster <laughs> oh, right I'll slowly amble back to the car I think Something's giving a reading of 111, which the pinpoint is not finding. Uh, oh, there we go, I cut out. Yeah, that was nice. Long cross cut out. A bit too warm to uh... in Headland, virtually under Edge Bottom, if we turn back. <laughs> It would be no one right near it, but I'm getting a really solid 60 61 straight line. You'll probably be able to hear it better now because I've had to take the headphones off. Right, 64 that way, so right, X marks the spot. It's a 98 now. These soil is soft. Victoria, but it's a bust or jubilee bust or something, they are the bust. She's knocking on a bit anyway. <laughs> uh, it's obviously a shilling.
I've no idea which side the date's on. But it's not on that side. Now yeah, I have to use my squirty bottle. Well, I'll clean it up and uh, have a look back in the car because. Uh, oh, hang on, what's that? Right down at the bottom. Define numbers. to be on his way back to the car but I keep getting signals. Oh I'll just turn you around and see you oh, sorry Flo I keep annoying you don't you? Oh. You have to dock me when you want one. Well, I'll assume that's 1887, because that's the 87. <laughs> right, Wounded Warrior Retreat. Right, time for a roundup. Uh, some of these you'll have seen uh, excavated, dug up. Some things you won't uh, because of the camera messing up, playing up. Uh, my fault. I um, left the camera in the uh, on the dashboard <laughs> in one of the hottest days of the year in full sun. I ended up having to go buy a pack of frozen peas to uh, cool it down so it would start working again. Anyway, back to the finds. Two Tom back buttons, 18th, 19th century. Uh, Tom back, by the way, is the name of the alloy that they're made from, a, uh, a kind of uh, copper alloy. And they're made by casting a, a flat button, then set, setting usually an iron ring into the molten liquid before it uh, sets. Above that, an Aquarius um, Zodiac pendant, only made out of cheap alloy and adenized, beginning to corrode a bit. Obviously some uh, hippie at, the, uh, at a rock concert has lost it. Above that, a bit more interesting, a uh, cockerel lapel stick pin. Now on the back it says, take courage. And when I've checked on it, it's uh, a bit of advertising from uh, Courage Breweries who decided to um, change their image in the 1950s. And so between the 1950s and the late 60s, there were loads and loads of uh, advertising material with this cockerel on saying, take courage. So it's a bit of uh, brewery, is it called brewery mania or something? Brewery advertising material, anyway. Next to that, fairly typical uh, decibel half P. Uh, when was it? Do you know, I can't remember. Um, 1976, I've just looked at my notes. 1976 half P. Next to that, a George VI um, 
sh uh, two shilling florin 1948 which is a shame because uh, in 1946 they dropped making them out of uh, silver and decided to make them out of cupro nickel so its worth is just a scrap below that though that's a uh, victoria shilling uh, which is a uh, I haven't mentioned the pennies. I haven't mentioned the I'll go back to the pennies. Uh, a Victoria shilling. Jubilee head shilling, 1887. That was the, the year of the uh, Jubilee shillings. Below that, a bit worn, but still perfectly readable. A, a young Victoria bust this time. And that's a groat, 1854 groat. Uh, groats for old pence. It's not a coin that were used... Uh, much after uh, uh, Victoria. I don't remember them ever being used when I were a kid. These two, which I, I slipped past, are two George the Third farthing. Uh, Hapenies. <laughs> uh, the bottom one, uh, quite worn. Uh, you barely make it out. Uh, it's George the Third, 1770 something. Uh, above that is a better condition one, another George the Third Hapenie, 1807. Uh, this one's quite thick, and it's got the groove around the, the uh, rim. That one, it's quite thin, quite worn. Right, slipping over to him. This one I'm quite proud, uh, proud of. That's a, a Queen Anne, 1711. Now, I've never found one before. It's a bit discoloured, a bit worn, but still recognisable. Uh, so that's Queen Anne, 1711. Below that is a William III, uh, 1697. Um, it's obviously been a love token at some time, and it's either got straightened out by farm machinery running over it or someone deliberately trying to uh, flatten it to, to spend. But that's uh, William III, 1697. Below that... It's a, a little Edward II's long cross farthing. Now, Edward II were knocking about between 1307 and 1327. I don't know why, but his farthings are always stem, uh, stamped off centre on the flan. Whether they couldn't, uh, I think it's London Mint, this one. So whether they uh, couldn't get them centred on when they were stamping them, I don't know. Below that is a a cut half penny. Now that's uh, actually Henry the uh, Third. So he were knocking about twelve forty seven, twelve seventy two. The reason I know it's Henry the Third is I can just see where he's holding a scepter, and uh, none of the sort of long cross cut half pennies. Um, the the other sort of uh, Edwards and so on held the scepter. So that's got to be Henry III. Next to that, a, a small, thin, but it's gold. It's uh, got, it's stamped 3.7, oh, yeah, th 0.375, which is 9 karat gold. Uh, the hallmarks say HG, it's uh, the Chester Assay Office, and the, the date mark... <coughs> is sort of like a, a curvy W, which is 1947. The Chester Mint, by, by the way, the Chester Assay Office closed in uh, 1962, so you'll not see any uh, modern ones. It, it, um, HG, when I've looked it up, is uh, Henry Greaves. He had a lot of stuff that went through the um, Chester assay office uh, even though they were based in new street birmingham uh, he used the chester uh, assay office and uh, he were well his, his trademark were registered in uh, uh, 1904 so he must have been well into his prime when he were uh, assaying that ring gave that ring uh, assayed so that's my finds for uh, a two-day session. Some you'll have seen, some you won't. Um, I don't think it's bad. Um, but to be fair, it, it, it were an undetected site, virtually. Um, 
huge estates. I only did a fraction and I concentrated on the the bit that they called the sacred ground, uh, an old village, church, come fair site, market site, which I knew there'd be a coin spills there. And then up in the... Um, um, the, around the walled garden and the arboretum and the 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 the, the fancy gardens, uh, where obviously the nobles would have walked, <laughs> uh, took the the air. So I concentrated those areas. I did a bit on the uh, the uh, pastures and a bit on the uh, um, harvested fields, but it was just too damn hot. So. I'd like to go back there again, if there's a chance. Especially as um, two lads on what they, what they call the rock concert field. <laughs> Between them, they found well over £60 in, uh, just in pound coins while I were there. Um, only about half an hour. They were uh, filling the pockets with, with cash. Good profit. So, with that, I'll set her on. And if you liked the video... Please give it a like, a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It costs you nothing. And if you feel that way inclined, please share my video and let other people know. So, bye.